Okay, welcome back to round two. We have Kyle Delpaggio playing his bug list versus Thomas Vandermeulen, I hope I'm saying that right, playing goblins. Um, Kyle's deck, we've seen it before. I don't think he's made any changes to it. Um, you know, going with the assumption of uh, not fixing what isn't broken. Um, Thomas playing a, a goblin list, a powered goblin list. Uh, he's got the main deck, Graph Digger's Cages, Mental Missteps, a Vamp Tutor, Demonic Tutor, Demonic Consultation. Um, lots of explosive plays, as you can see. I mean, he started off with uh, two mana. To, oh, that wasn't very explosive. Oh, it was on the stack, I see. Yeah, Spell Pierce hitting that is is a totally reasonable play. There's not a lot of cards in Tom's deck that are going to be able to get Spell Pierce. No. Soul Ring is one of them. I'd imagine Kyle would have rather been able to hit the the soul ring, but it did stop Tom from having any turn one play. Right. And I mean, um, it's fair, it's a red source. Kyle knows, I mean, he doesn't know before the game started that he's facing goblins, that I'm aware of anyway, but if you see Mountain and then uh, Ruby, you can pretty much assume you're facing like some sort of goblin deck. Yeah, I think playing the Mountain there was may have been a slight mistake, actually. Uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't sure if there was a reason to do that uh, aside from days, um, but for the most part, you're given a lot of information. And if you just lead with a ruby, people are not going to assume that you're on goblins necessarily and, and right. spell pierce it. And if you make a habit of it, good for you, because there's going to be games where you lead with ruby and they spell pierce, and then you ancestral on your first turn. Uh, so pretty much the the best play there would be to just run it out there. I, I wouldn't be too worried about days. Uh, so we got a pile driver on his side of the table, I believe. That's the, That's uh, the DCI pile the DCI driver. One. Foil, very cool. Yeah, now this is uh, the list that Tom let me borrow last time, but with power. Uh, for those of you who didn't tune into last month's coverage, uh, I actually didn't have my power with me, which was just totally absurd. Uh, but the community came together and had a deck for me to borrow. Uh, Tom's list has gone through some changes since then putting a much bigger emphasis on the Earwig Squad combo. Uh, that is just so good versus so many other decks. Uh, he also increased the amount of Mental Missteps, Graph Diggers Cages, and in the sideboard, Pyrokinesis, which is absolutely huge versus all of the decks that are trying to play with fair creatures. Hmm. Uh, Gem Palm Incinerator does a lot of work here. Pile Driver coming across from one. Yeah, especially since uh, Kyle's deck leans heavily on utility creatures. He doesn't have anything fat like a Tarmogoyf that'll just get in the way. All of his creatures, I think his his biggest backside is, is uh, Trigon Predator, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's definitely an issue. Uh, Jump Palm Incinerator d does a ton of work and keeps the card advantage going. I've actually seen people running things like Wart to be able to recur the Jump Palm Incinerator, mm. and that is a game state that you may not be able to win out of it if your plan is actually like Wizard Beats from Dark Confidant and Snapcaster. You're just not going to be able to do anything about that. Uh, Goblin Warchief is one of those cards that just makes the deck work. It's so good. It does everything you could possibly want. It makes all your guys hasty, makes them cost less, I and mean, that guy's just absolutely amazing. Uh, so Abrupt Decay is going to find a mark there. Yeah, and I mean... Uh, Kyle's actually not in too tough of a position right now. He's making land drop. Oh, did he just miss a land drop and pass? Yeah, I think that's what happened. Uh, so, um, Goblin Welder. Yeah, Welder's hedging Pretty against cool. the Workshop decks and also versus Tinker Colossus. Mm. Uh, it's not as good versus Tinker Colossus as a lot of people think because... What can happen is during a Yawgmoth's will turn, you tinker, and then the Mox goes to the graveyard, and then is it doesn't even go. It's exiled instead because of the Yawgmoth's will. So it's not a real safety barrier versus the Blightsteel. Uh, that's something that catches people off guard sometimes where they just feel like, oh, I can't lose the tinker now. Hmm. Uh, I mean, he is going to be able to upgrade his basically useless Graph Digger's Cage into a Saw Ring or a Ruby if he needs another red source. Yeah, that, that's definitely a, a potential line. He also, it more than likely, is just going to start turning it sideways, uh, depending on what it is, what's in his hand. Well, yeah, the additional two damage. Yeah, three really, because you, you got to count the pile driver and the plus two to the uh, the plus two to the pile driver and the one from the, right. the welder. So abrupt decay. The third abrupt decay. Wow, 
That card is... Kyle Abrupt Decay Del Paggio. Finding its targets all over the place. Pile Driver is not the most popular in the vintage goblin builds. A lot of them are, have moved over to trying to use the Earwig Squad, maximum number of matrons, uh, you know, maximum number of lackeys, and then some number of the Warren Instigator to just try and power stuff out. Pile Driver a little bit more popular, a lot more popular in Legacy, where people feel like he's kind of the backbone of the deck, mm -hmm. making it so you can have those turn three kills. Uh, in Vintage, turn two Earwig Squad could actually end the game, so the, it makes sense to lean more heavily on that. And it's not disrupted by stuff like Abrupt Decay as easily. If they do hit you with the Goblin, killing the Earwig Squad after the fact would be totally irrelevant. If you have a Lightning Bolt or a Swords, doesn't matter. Unless, of course, you have one of your win conditions in your hand. So Thomas ripping a D-Tutor. What do you think? I mean, I don't know. I know he has a mental misstep in his hand, a D-Tutor, and one mystery card. Well, versus Kyle's deck, Earwig Squad is not at its finest. He has a ton of cards that can win the game. Uh, there's nothing that's overly powerful that you really, really have to take. I mean, this is the power. There's cards like Scavenging Ooze, which you can get out of hand. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's there's really there's no Tinker, Blightsteel, Time Volt, Voltaic, T type of combos that just really will beat you. Uh, we'll see. I mean, Earwig is definitely a possibility. If he loses his uh, Welder and he can't Prowl it out, then it's completely dead in his hand. So that, that would be a mess. Yep. So he's ramping a little bit so that he can actually play whatever he gets with his tutor. He's got a mana floating, so he can play a three drop. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So maybe he starts a matron chain. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. That's something you don't see as much in vintage. Is just matron into matron and just get a bunch of them out. It it used to happen with the food chain deck uh, mm -hmm. because you'd have multiple war chiefs making the matrons only cost one, so you'd go get it and then you'd sack it to food chain, so you'd get four. And just really go nuts. Well, um, it's one of the only times Flusterstorm will be useful this game. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's just going to be for two, though. So. Yeah, but it's kind of like a time walk. Yeah. Yeah, to a degree. I mean, it's it's certainly stopping the rest of rest of his turn. Yeah. I mean, it's not like it was going to do anything else. Maybe pitch to a force that he might or might not draw. Yeah, it would have been nice if he had the ability to do something else before that. Hmm. Like a brainstorm and then fluster storm, or vamp tutor fluster storm, something like that. And, yeah, and really tap them out. He's but, looking at that earwig squad. Yeah, that, that's the most likely target. It's a five three. Uh, I don't know why he's showing it, just to uh, yeah let let everybody know. I do that sometimes. Yeah, why not? You know. Yeah, I'll 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 do that when I have a better card in my hand. <laughs> like if I have Yogmoth's will in hand. I'll DT for Tinker sometimes and show it and then play the Tinker. Uh, there's a real urge to counter the card you think they tutored for. Yeah. Uh, so I've definitely gotten people with that before. I've also done it just as a mistake. When I play a deck with four matrons and then you play a tutor effect, you're like, oh, I gotta show them. Oh, wait, no, I don't. Do we have a Snapcaster? So, womp, yeah, womp. Snapcaster, no Prowl. Yeah. But... I mean, it's a one-for-one one trade. Uh, it looks like he's probably going to... Ooh, Gem Palm. Oh, so good. Tap the two mountains, Gem Palm, blow out. Four blocks. Yeah. Sick. So now he's going to be able to prowl, probably get rid of, like, I don't know, Scavenging Ooze and Trigon Predator, and then everything else is manageable. Maybe get rid of the Death Rate Shamans, but... I mean... He's got a yeah ancestral oh that too time yeah. walk like those are the cards I would be worried about. He doesn't have time walk anymore. He played the time walk. Oh, so there you go. Then then ancestral would be the first thing I'd be concerned with. And yeah, demonic tutor is not going to be exceptional. So yeah, I I would say your your power, you know, Jace is not really going to matter that much here. Mm -hmm. And Kyle is is pretty far off of Jace mana as it is. Black Lotus could be a card that you'd consider knowing that your opponent is mana screwed as well. Yeah, Jace is, is uh, 
He only plays the one ooze, so... Yeah, so the ooze is the, the right call there. What was, was the third one? Was that a Mox Jet? I saw Ancestral. It might have been Lotus. Yeah, um, Lotus makes more sense. And there we go. This is... This is looking very manageable for the Goblin player at this yeah. point. This is what you want to see when you're piloting Red Men. Mm -hmm. Is a very low, crippled mana base, no creatures on board, and a fast clock. Another good thing about the about the uh, the earwig squad is he can't be abrupt decayed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he gets the concession here. Mm -hmm. Moving on, conserving time. It's it's definitely something you see a lot more of in vintage. Is scooping when you could mathematically still have outs. Um, clock management is very relevant, and for Kyle's deck, he would not want to get into a spot where game three. If, let's say that Kyle wins a long game two, mm -hmm. and then game three, he doesn't have enough time to finish it out. Right, That's like he's, a problem. Like he has like you know board stability, and he's just like two more death rate activations away from winning or something along exactly. those lines. Exactly, because you dirtled around mm -hmm. and waited to see if there was not. No, there's there's pretty much nothing that's going to happen there. Uh, you know, it's it's conceivable that you know you could draw. Uh, I, I don't even. I don't even know their Trigon. I mean, maybe chain some blockers, some death rites in there, but ultimately, there's just no way. So, uh, coming out of the board, I think Kyle's definitely getting rid of his Fluster Storms, um, his Spell Pierces. Yeah, your missteps are going to stay in, even though the opposing deck has a full boat of Cavern of Souls. Cavern of Souls is really, really good here. It's going to stop a lot of the counters on the things that matter. Yep. Um, you know, he, his sideboard uh, for the Goblin player, you're definitely looking at the Pyrokinesis because it kills yeah. all of the guys. Uh, and then you also have Pyroblast, which is a totally reasonable card here. Now, I'm not a big fan of Pyroblast in general in the Goblin decks. I feel like if you're going to have counter spells, you really want them to be something like Mental Misstep, uh, first and foremost, or even something like Mind Break Trap. Yeah, because you're not gonna, you don't wanna, you don't wanna tie up your mana sitting back playing defense when you are the like combo aggro deck. Absolutely. And so, do you think Kyle's gonna bring in his Yixla Jailers, even though their effect doesn't really do much? They they are bodies on the table. They are. Um, yeah, we'll we will see here. I mean, he's definitely bringing in his three dismembers, um, without a doubt. I don't see a reason to bring in Nature's Claim. Or Hercules Recall, or now Spellbomb. Um, as far as the number of dead cards he has, it's the Spell Pierce and the Fluster Storms that really stand out for me. So, oh, and Steel Sabotage. What was I? What was I thinking? So maybe Steel Sabotages and Fluster Storms, or Steel Sabotage Spell Pierce, just for three dismember. I think is really all he needs. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Yixla Jailer stops Gemp Home Incinerator. I believe when you cycle it, it, part of the cycling cost is paying the mana and discarding it. And when it's in the graveyard, it has no abilities. Ooh. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that actually happens. That's a pretty cool interaction I didn't know about. Yeah, I don't know if we can get James to, to check that out us, for us while we're taking a look at these opening hands, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the interaction in between... Yixla Jailer and Gem Palm Incinerator is very favorable for Kyle here. So what comes out of the Goblin deck? Probably the Grit. Well, definitely the Graft Digger's Cages. Um, maybe he just goes three cages for three Kinesis. Three Pyrokinesis. Yeah, it's a totally reasonable way to sideboard. I mean, Sting Scourger doesn't do a ton here. Now that's mostly in the the deck for Blightsteel Colossus, but it's a totally fine tempo play as well. And it's good against the Scavenging Ooze. Yeah, it can reset things. Uh, if he was in a really bad spot, he could even do something as crazy as reset an Earwig Squad and get multiple Prowls out of it. Oh, wow. Uh, probably wouldn't see that very often, uh, but that would be where it's at its best versus Kyle's deck. Earwig Squad in multiples is much, much better versus Kyle because it can really cut off his ability to to get guys on board. Now, did I just see Thomas go down to six cards, or is he just not drawn a seven yet? No, he's, he's going down to six here. Okay. Kyle's, uh, Kyle's keeping his seven, which, 
is pretty common with that list. I actually got an opportunity, I don't know in power, but um, I actually got an opportunity to to play his list in a proxy tournament, and it was very consistent. Um, yep, Thomas, Thomas going down to five. Looks like we got an answer on the uh, on the Yixla Jailer Gem Palm interaction. Yeah, it looks like from the the text I just saw from James there that the trigger does happen from the graveyard, and Yixla Jailer removes all abilities from cards in graveyards. So there would be no cycling for damage, but you would get the card. Cycling, you still get the card, yes, but you don't get the damage. That Absolutely. I mean, now that's not a interaction I knew about. I wonder if Kyle knew about that interaction when he was set. I mean, I could see it being totally reasonable just bringing in the jailer just to be a body against the the horde of goblins. But um, no, I agree. I, I just think. When you're when you're looking at something with Goblin Pile Driver and you're running Snapcaster Mages, it would be nice to be able to block the thing every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, a black two, a black two power. Because you don't want to trade a Dark Confidant with it if he if he can help it. Yeah, Thomas going down to four. I mean, that's he would have to have a pretty ridiculous opener to 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 win with a four card hand. I yeah, mean, on the draw it's going to be tough. He's going to need a really early pro. Oh yeah, he is on the draw. That's true. And, and is if he's able to get out the 5-3 early and have it stick, then maybe he'll be able to ride it as far as the damage goes. But as we said, Prowling doesn't end the game like it does versus some of the combo decks. Yeah, he could get... So, uh, five cards that would be really good, I guess, would be turn one, Cavern of Souls, into Goblin Lackey with maybe a Mox Ruby, and then the... The Prowl guy and another land. Womp womp. So yeah, that that all sounds awesome, but it doesn't matter versus turn nope. one death right and dark confidant. Uh, oh wow, he's got the pyrokinesis. Boom. That's so good here. Mopping up all of that work. It's like Black Lotus never even happened. Awesome start. That it's is like... so fortunate. And he has cavern into lackey. So there you oh, go. Wow. What a huge turnaround. Yeah. That's like oh hey Kyle, I see you. Played three cards. I'll get rid of all of them with two cards. Wow, that is absolutely huge. Now, if Tom had waited, uh, he may have been able to get all three of these blockers here. This lackey may be running into opposition right now, uh, but that would have been absolutely epic. If Kyle drops a Dark mm -hmm. Confidant right now, uh, what what a turnaround that would be. It's really tough, though, to to allow someone to get an, uh, a, an upkeep with a Dark Confidant. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And the extra draw step as well. You're talking about two cards toward a force of will. Uh, but yeah, this is... Oh, that's the other way to do it. Yep. All right. So maybe this is the 5-3, and the Prowling really doesn't matter versus Kyle no. that much. I mean, it's awesome to get rid of stuff like Ancestral and Time Walk. Yep. Uh, and then it's good to be able to see what their sideboard plan is as well. Um, so really, Kyle needs to be drawing like Dismember to deal with Earwig Squad here, or it's going to be Smashing Face. Yeah, which, you know, he did. Okay. Which well, is fine. That's apparently how this game's going to go. It's, it's just going to be swinging for the fences on both sides the whole way. Everything's coming up Millhouse. We've got another Lackey. I mean, let's let's see what he can drop off of this. We got anything good? Oh, uh, Pile Driver. driver. Alright. He's, he's keeping damage. He's got to be hoping for... Uh, for some bad confidant flips, that would really help. Yeah. Maybe flip up a force of will or two. Yeah. What did he just flip? Oh no, he hasn't. He hasn't flipped yet. Well, I saw a life total adjustment on the monitor. That was the one damage from the lackey. Oh, okay. Then yeah, I'm not sure what happened with that flip. Uh, if Kyle missed it, the way that the tournament rules currently work is it would be up to Tom whether or not he wants to put the confidant flip on the stack. It's actually Tom's call. At that point, oh. I'm not crazy about that rule. Uh, that, that doesn't really uh, jive with playing to win. Uh, I'd, I'd rather see the the judge make the call, uh, yeah. like like it was in the past. But I mean, they they don't consult me on these things. We got plenty of caverns on Kyle on uh, Tom's side of the board, so all of his goblins from here on out are uncounterable. Uh, even though Kyle has some wastelands, it's uh, not likely to matter here. We've got a, oh, a demonic tutor. tutor. That is a nice D tutor. Yeah, we've got uh, probably with an empty hand, ancestrals a really good bet yeah. here. Uh, time walk 
is only going to get you one extra card off of the Dark Confidant plus the extra two damage, so I'd rather go with the Ancestral and then draw into the Time Walk. Especially since Thomas doesn't have a hand, so you know he doesn't have min misstep right now. Yeah, now's the time to be casting Ancestral. Mm -hmm. uh, he hasn't been casting a lot of one casting cost stuff, so if Tom had a misstep, it would have just been sitting in his hand the whole time. I like that shortcut, too, fetching while you're in there, because, again, when you're playing against the clock... Oh, and he got the ooze. Interesting. There's yeah. a bunch of creatures in the graveyard, so ooze is going to get very large. Oh, yeah. I mean, at this point now, that ooze is pretty much going to run this show, because he's got... What does he have? A uh, an earwig squad, a pile driver, a... And what's... And a death rate shaman and a dark confident. So, yeah, that's going to be a six six ooze. Yeah, life from the um, loam there. No danger of dying to pyrokinesis. Life from the loam is pretty cool because uh, that's just even more card advantage for Kyle. Yeah, he's going to be able to really ratchet up the number of green sources he has to make scavenging ooze relentlessly efficient here. Yeah, I would be very cautious. Well, I guess he doesn't have to worry about Pyrokinesis because it costs six mana and he's only going to draw one card, so he could have loaned that turn. Um, but he didn't, you know, he doesn't know what else he could potentially be. Yeah, so trading the Dark Confidant, Kyle's completely confident that Scavenging Ooze is going to be enough to win this game all by himself. Uh, with and with Tom drawing one card, probably turn. right. I mean, he's he just buffed it up three more. So now, what is it? That's an eight eight. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna bring him down to two. Yeah, and it gains life. And he's got six cards in hand. If he has one Force of Will, then you know, actually, Force of Will might not matter with Double Cavern. Yeah, Cavern makes this matchup very very dangerous. Something like Sting Scourger can still come down. Mm -hmm. and, and completely ruin your plans. And then the ooze is just a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, but of course he, he can get the uh, the Demonic Tutor here. Yeah, but... Oh, but there you no. go. So the Spell Pierce forcing Tom to tap out in order to pay for it means that he can't get the Sting Scourger. Yep. So yeah, if Kyle had not Spell Pierced that, then Sting Scourger would have been coming down uncounterable. Mm -hmm. He would have been able to pay the upkeep. It would have been a completely different game. Uh, still would have been in a very bad spot for Tom, but without the creatures in the graveyard, yeah. it's not like he would have been able to just grow it back up to a ten ten or something. I mean, it would have been a, it would have been a little bit of staring at each other for uh, for a bit there. So I don't think Kyle brought in the jailers. Um, we'll see. I mean, yeah. see it's, it's an uncommon it. interaction. I yeah, mean, people really don't know about it, but it's it's a good one. Goes deep. Yep. I mean, I brought in. Yixla Jailer versus people playing Snapcaster when the the card first came out, hoping that they would think that Yixla Jailer would stop it. Mm -hmm. Like, knowing that it doesn't, but just hoping that somehow... Flashback that is not it. an ability, it's an alternative casting cost. Uh, so, it is an ability? It's an ability? Yeah, so the difference is... Oh, the layers? The, yeah, the timestamp. Okay. So, like, Yogmoth's Will doesn't get shut off by Yixla Jailer because it's not abilities on cards, but flash, Flashback is giving it the ability of Flashback, which goes because of the way the, the uh, layers work, which is very complicated, which is why I'd bring it in, because not everybody knows it. I can't even explain it fully, because it's pretty much whatever Wizard says that interaction. Like, they could change it tomorrow. It's not like you can, like, reason it out. It's not like, you know, some kind of uh, math-based thing where it's just like, oh, you can arrive at the correct answer. It's just somebody's got to make an arbitrary choice at some point so we can play the darn game. Yeah. And they just came down on, on the way of the, the layers working, and it happens that Snapcaster will trump Yixla Jailer. Interesting. Uh, it's it's a very complex card. For, for one and a black, I mean, it's not quite humility, but it's it's up there in terms of the, the interactions. Mm. So Thomas on the play... What do we want to see Thomas's opener? I mean... Well, you'd like to have Pyrokinesis. Pyrokinesis, Pyrokinesis is very, very helpful here. Turn one lackey yeah, he, off of Cavern Souls, maybe. Yeah, that's the best case scenario for him. Now, he doesn't have the Warren Instigator, so for him to have really explosive starts, he's going to need the lackey or some of his power. Now, you note, uh, Thomas decided to run this as a powered deck. Goblins is a more than reasonable choice for a bet, uh, for unpowered deck. 
Mm -hmm. uh, this tournament, I don't think we have John on camera this time, do we? Mm, no. No? So uh, John uh, made the finals last time with a unpowered Goblin deck, and this tournament he also finished as the highest unpowered deck again. Uh, so Goblins is really a solid choice for unpowered. Mm -hmm. And at Vintage Champs, I don't know if you saw their prize payout, first place unpowered is going to be four hundred dollars. Wow. So that is crazy. To have a Huge. chance at top eighting and be a lock for, you know, a serious prize for being the best on powered is, is quite a good spot. Deathrite Shaman, man, that card's good versus Goblin Everything. Lackey. Yeah. <laughs> it's just good. Yeah, every once in a while, like the Grixis list I've been running I've got four lightning bolts post board, so you just get the death right shamans out of the way. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be watching someone playing a, a match, and there'll be a death right shaman, and it's like, wow, that card is literally beating them all by themselves. Like they just have like a yog moth's will and like all sorts of good stuff, and it's just none of it's gonna matter because death right completely trumps what they're trying to do. One man of planeswalker. Yeah, he really is like a planeswalker. I've been saying that since day one. He's just so many abilities tacked on. And, uh, you know, his, his ultimate worst-case scenario, he's attacking for one. Hmm. Doesn't have equipment in this format, so not quite as good as he is in Legacy in terms of what he does. But in terms of preventing your opponent, what he's preventing are much more powerful plays compared to just countering a Snapcaster. Now you might be stopping someone from ever being able to use Yawgmoth's Will over the course of several turns and doing a bunch of damage. All right, Chris, what are you going to do? You got a cycle. Cast? Oh. Oh, no, Yeah, he's cycling. cycling. He's got one floating. Go ahead and cycle. Got to get rid of that Dark he Confidant needs before he starts drawing cards. Needs to draw a red source. And it looks like he didn't find it, but it's still the right play to get rid of the Bob. Yeah, you can't let them start out. Oh, he did have a red source. You there. So we've got another red... We'll see what he's got here. I don't think he's worried about Kyle's uh, wasteland effects very much, but let's see how many bad lands he's running. He's got two bad lands in his list, mm. so that's really not going to be that necessary. So Matron, and we've got a force. That'll meet a force of will. So no Cavern of Souls in play to back that up. Force of will finding a home, keeping Pile Driver to manageable power. Mm -hmm. There's really no point in attacking. End step, gain life. Pay a life to fetch, gain two back. Really just trying to find a way to stabilize here versus the goblin deck. Kyle's deck. You know, I, I was just going to say it's more powerful. I'm not really sure that it is. I mean, it definitely has access to the blue power, which is inherently more powerful, but when you're looking at creature-based strategies, he Kyle doesn't have the ability to put all his creatures on the table turn one without a Lotus, and uh, Thomas can just ramp out, I don't know. I don't know, it's interesting. Yeah, I actually think Thomas's deck may be more powerful. I'm, that doesn't necessarily say anything about who's the favorite in the matchup. Yeah. But in terms of what it can actually do with explosive starts, I mean, a, a turn one uh, lackey into... Uh, you know, with power, you could even be looking at a turn one lackey and a lotus into a war chief swinging and then putting in some, some more guys. I mean, there's, there's a lot more explosive starts out of the goblin list, especially when you're running pile driver. Mm-hmm. Now, Thomas, he ate three. It looks like he ate three damage from his mana crypt. He's got okay, double pile driver into so that uh, that trigon. Even though it's got the the three for the backside, it's not gonna it's not gonna be blocking a uh, pile driver anytime soon. Yeah. So this is gonna be interesting to see what Tom grabs here. Now he has some very powerful effects in his deck. He has the Earwig Squad. As we said, it's mostly just a 5-3 versus Kyle. Uh, he also has access to Goblin Sharpshooter, which can make it so all of Kyle's X1s are irrelevant for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, he has, uh, as well, I believe he has Kiki-Jiki. Yeah, he has Kiki-Jiki and a Ringleader in there. 
So lots of good options. Lots of different ways he can go with the matron. But he goes another, with another, another pile, pile driver. driver. So he's really going to try and rely heavily on this pro blue to uh, to just swing past as quickly as possible. I can't say I blame him. Uh, pretty good strategy here. Um, gives Kyle the option of drawing into more into abrupt decays. Um, you know, giving him more outs as far as his removal being live. But um, if he doesn't draw, he's just in top deck mode. So if he doesn't draw the removal, is that a strip mine? It is a strip oh, mine. Oh no! Wow, this is really a tough spot for Kyle here. He's got a wasteland on the other side of the table. He could really be hampered on mana here. If he gets rid of that death right shaman, it's going to get pretty gross. Getting a black source and choosing the damage. I think he wants to save some creatures just in case he draws that scavenging ooze. Doesn't want to get rid of all the creatures. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I absolutely that could be part of his thinking. That is interesting. Because the turn he comes down, he would then need to have the death right around in order to still have the green. Oh, but he had to fetch land anyways. Yeah. So I think he was he was mostly concerned with uh, starting to chip away. Trigon stayed home. So far, eating six damage from that uh, mana crypt. Yeah, better than attacking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that uh, mana crypt is doing Trigon's work on the other side of the table there. Right. And if Matron swings, he he will be able to block no matter what. Mm -hmm. Even if Kyle has a incinerator here. Yep. So yeah, Kyle just has to block that Matron. Yeah. If he could block it. He could even block with a death right charm. It's not really. A... No, 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 Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, so maybe he didn't attack because he thought he was going to be able to block. Yeah, it looks that way. I mean, the pro blue Abrupt isn't okay. oh. isn't the biggest. So yeah, he definitely could have done that before attacks to reduce. Yep, absolutely could have saved himself some life. Yeah, but he was planning on blocking and. Yeah, that major his, may not have attacked. In his mind, he was thinking, okay, he attacks with everything. I block the matron with a one two. I block a pile driver with a two three in trade, and then I abrupt decay the other one. And he wanted him to attack with all of them, but the fact that uh, pile driver's pro blue kind of changed that plan quite a bit. Yeah, he's, uh, Tom's really going after Kyle's mana base still. It's proven to be really resilient so far, though. Deathrite shaman is is going to be able to. Even let him drop a Jace this turn if he draws it. Not that it would do any good versus these pro blue pile drivers. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, four man is a pretty reasonable cost to brainstorm. At this point, with no cards in hand, it may be more like four man at a fate seal yourself, and that's the real danger here. Yeah, uh, he's he's got a lot of cards uh, of varying power levels, and he he needs to be drawing some good ones. He does not have time to just dirtle around. We're looking at six damage on uh, Tom's side of the board. That's one or two turns. One mana for a brainstorm. And it's misstepped. Oh, that's so, hey so good here. Kyle going down to nine. Hopefully he doesn't take too many more hits from that mana crypt. Uh, that would be the only thing. Kyle choosing not to blow up the mana crypt. Oh, there it is. Oh, man. And now Thomas is just dead on board? Yeah. Yeah, he's got death right activation, then another death right activation. He needs to have Gem Palm Incinerator or Pyrokinesis here, or his own mana crypt will have done him in. Well, I mean, even if he has Gem Palm, uh, Kyle activates death right minus two and then swings. You're right, and then that. Uh, well, Kiki Jiki might mix things up a little bit. How much damage does this create? Having three pile drivers. Three, they would each get plus four. So 5, 10, 15 damage. I mean, but Kyle blocks one. And still has the, the crack. Still has, back. yep. Wow, that two damage earlier proved to be the whole match. When yeah. When he decided to get that black source. Interesting. This is this is coming down to Xaxes. Yeah. Wow. That was a really interesting match. 
uh, definitely could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. uh, I like how the powered goblin deck. You notice their mana base was a lot buffer. Uh, I mean, you had the ability to cast Kiki Jiki and, and yep. do a lot more, so it plays different than the unpowered build. Uh, yeah, it, it's interesting to see it when it's made as optimal as possible with the inclusion of Black Lotus, Ruby, Jet, and, uh, you know, it, it does make a difference. Yeah, I mean, taking, what did you take, nine damage from that from that mana crypt? I mean, that's pretty tough. That was unfortunate. That you was know? that was definitely a determining factor. Cause, but Kyle not attacking and blowing it up was also relevant. I mean, that was yeah, that, that was some interesting, interesting choices, perhaps by accident, because <laughs> yeah. he he did keep it back and then try and block. Uh, but it certainly ended up working out in favor of the the bug player there. Uh, I would like to see this this matchup a lot more. I think it's someone that you're going to see a lot of. In, uh, in the future, I think Goblins is a very real player in Vintage, and I think Bug is uh, is really just starting to hit its stride. It is a metagame deck, and you know Kyle, I think this uh, list is actually the same as last time. I think he's really comfortable with it, mm -hmm. uh, so that's that says something. When, when you're able to have a metagame deck and, and not have to tinker with it too much, uh, you get in a pretty good spot there. Yeah. That was very interesting. He did take out. He took out five cards, uh, or he was bringing him back in five cards. So I want to say he brought in the two. He brought in two Yixla jailers anyway. Um, yeah. Well, that was a really interesting round two, and I'm really looking forward to round three. We'll see you there.